Watertown line began at the Watertown Yard and Car House, just across the Charles River from Watertown Square. Watertown cars turned left onto Galen Street to head to downtown Boston. Here an ex-Dallas car leaves the yard to head to Commonwealth Avenue and Blandford Street for subway shuttle service. two outbound cars on Galen Street. Car 3132 is heading south on Galen Street in Watertown. The car enters Nonatum Square in Newton Corner. An outbound car on Tremont Street in Newton. Car 3131 is turning from Park Street to Tremont Street in Newton. Street in Brighton. A 
two-car train picks up a passenger at Washington Street and Lake Street. turns from Washington Street to Cambridge Street near St. Elizabeth's Hospital. An outbound car on Cambridge Street. inbound car at Union Square in Alston. An outbound car on Brighton Avenue at Union Square. Alston. In the mid 1960s, the Massachusetts Turnpike Extension was being constructed to downtown Boston. This necessitated traffic and track changes in Newton Corner. Until the traffic islands were completed, the Newton Corner car stop was located on the bridge over the turnpike and the New York Central Railroad. Because of turnpike construction, Streetcars had to negotiate a shoe fly on Commonwealth Avenue near the BU Bridge. Subway portal at Commonwealth Avenue and Blandford Street. Watertown and Boston College cars entered the subway at this point. view of the Watertown Yard in the late 1960s.
Watertown Square and the Watertown Line Terminal. Newton Corner and the bridge over the Massachusetts Turnpike Extension. Inbound cars ran wrong way over the bridge. This was intended as a temporary arrangement but remained in use until buses were substituted for the streetcars in 1969. After that date, only non-revenue runs continued over the tracks. There was a streetcar loading area on the north side of the bridge. turning from Park Street onto Tremont Street in Newton. Traveling outbound on Tremont Street in Newton. The MBTA started to experience problems with the PCC fleet in the late 1960s. Since the Watertown line was the most lightly patronized of the five lines using the Central Subway, it was decided to discontinue streetcar service in 1969 in favor of buses.
After 1969, the Watertown Car House served as a heavy repair facility for the streetcar system. Derelict cars would be brought in and repaired or scrapped. Non-revenue streetcar operations continued on an infrequent basis into the 1980s. Cars were often scrapped in the Watertown yard. Today, the streetcar tracks are paved over, even in the yard. Streetcars will never return to the Watertown line. The Boston College line began at Lake Street and Commonwealth Avenue. At Chestnut Hill Avenue and Commonwealth Avenue. an inbound train along Commonwealth Avenue in the early 1960s. Boston College cars at the subway portal at Commonwealth Avenue and Blandford Street. The next stop, Kenmore Station. On a snowy winter day, a two-car train is inbound on Commonwealth Avenue at Blandford Street. Car 3228 and two mates head outbound to Boston College on Commonwealth Avenue. At Commonwealth Avenue and Chestnut Hill Avenue on a snowy day.
the end of Beacon Street line at Cleveland Circle in Boston. The PCC train is turning onto Chestnut Hill Avenue to get to the reservoir yard. A three-car train of picture window PCC cars enters Beacon Street to begin the trip to downtown Boston. The PCC train enters the lower reservoir yard from Chestnut Hill Avenue. car train heads inbound on Beacon Street near Lancaster Terrace.
of the center entrance sandcars and the system's line car 3283 outside Reservoir Car House. Reservoir Car House built in 1890 for the new electric streetcar line on Beacon Street. The early MBTA paint scheme was gray and white with yellow doors. The designers thought the special emphasis on the doors would speed loading. car train enters the subway at St. Mary's Street and Beacon Street. The Riverside Station served as a stop for intercity bus lines and a terminal for the streetcar line. Car service began in 1959 using the tracks of the Boston and Albany's Highland Branch. A two-car train enters the Riverside Station using the loop around the storage yard. The streetcar yard was enlarged from its original size when the line opened. A two-car train leaves the former railroad line for Riverside Station.
leaving the station heading inbound. Sunday schedules required only single car service. On other days, two or three car trains were normal. PCC cars head inbound as seen from a less fortunate mate. <laughs> One of the system's snow plows originally built in 1907. combination of three plow blades on each car kept the tracks clear. An outbound car west of Reservoir Station. the upper reservoir yard. An outbound car approaches the reservoir station platform. The lower reservoir yard and reservoir car house. The temporary loop at Cook Street on the Riverside Line. Track work was being upgraded between here and Riverside Station for the new LRVs. The loop was about one half mile west of the Newton Highlands Station. outbound near the Longwood Avenue station. In 1962, the Metropolitan Transit Authority still used center entrance cars for sand service. Bum, 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 bum. 
This car is passing the Museum of Fine Arts on Huntington Avenue. The Prudential Tower is under construction in the background. The center entrance cars were used in passenger service from 1916 to 1953. The conductor tended to the trolley poles from his station at the center of the car. A train of all electric PCC cars has arrived at the Arbor Way station. Inbound cars leave Arbor Way Station and head under the New Haven Railroad. An ex Dallas car heads to the Northeastern University stop to serve as a subway shuttle between there and Park Street Station. A two-car train heads inbound on the Arbor Way for the subway. In the 1970s, one of the last in-service track work projects was being undertaken on South Street in Jamaica Plain. A temporary crossover was installed in pavement, and inbound and outbound cars ran on the same single track. An inbound train negotiates the temporary crossover. The outbound train can now proceed. Inbound to downtown Boston at South and Center Streets. two-car train of all electric PCC cars turns onto South Street in Jamaica Plain. A fast Amtrak passenger train passes over the Arbor Way line. Cars ran under the Forest Hills Elevated to get to the Lotus Place Car House at Arbor Way.
inside the Lotus Place car house. A sand car converted from an ex Dallas car. Picture window cars head outbound on Huntington Avenue at Brigham Circle. PCC car heading inbound on Huntington Avenue at Longwood Avenue. Park Street Station in downtown Boston. In the late 1970s, the MBTA experienced its worst days with the streetcar system. A two-car train for the Arbor Way line negotiates the inner loop at Park Street Station. Arlington Station. the three cars painted for the Bicentennial at Government Center Station. LRV 3402 was being tested at Government Center Station on the Brattle Loop Track. Arlington Station. In the winter of 1977, there was a severe car shortage. This LRV is one of only four in use on the system at the time.
Park Street Station. A train of PCC cars climbs onto the East Cambridge Viaduct at North Station. The photographer is standing on the main line elevated platform at North Station, which closed in 1975. Train turns to follow Causeway Street. The surface level platform at North Station under the viaduct. The loop was replaced by stub end tracks after LRVs replaced PCC cars. It is now closed due to subway construction. A winter scene from the 1970s. The viaduct in East Cambridge. A train arrives at the inbound platform of Leechmere Station. A two-car train pulls into the outbound platform at Leechmere. The train climbs the structure at Leechmere to head into downtown Boston.
a three-car train passes the registry building, as seen from the West End Redevelopment Project. North Station during the blizzard of 1978. Limited service was provided during the emergency. This LRV will travel to Lechmere Station. Since 1958, the Mattapan Ashmont line has been disconnected from the rest of the system. This car is approaching Valley Road Station. Leaving Ashmont Station for Mattapan. Arriving at Mattapan Station from Ashmont. Most of the ex Dallas car fleet served on the Mattapan Ashmont line during the 1960s and the 1970s.